Well, I want to talk about something today that's maybe not the sexiest thing in the garden, but I think it uh, needs to be talked about. You know, Mama Hoss and I was talking the other night. We got talking about green beans. We've been married 38 years, and neither one of us could remember ever buying a canned green bean. Green beans are something that just we naturally grow in the garden every year, and we put them up, and when we get ready to enjoy green beans, we just empty them out of that jar. I think it's something that more people should grow, but we don't give it as much uh, attention because it's something we just do all the time. And we got a variety I want to talk about specifically today. So let's get over here and take a look. Hey, but first we probably need to stop by the backer patch. I want y'all to look at here at that pretty flower growing there. Isn't that something? I don't know that I've ever seen tobacco flower out because tobacco in the fields, they top out. They want to keep them topped out. And you see those suckers right there? Yeah, that's a sucker just like tomato growing out of the armpit there. If that was growing in the tobacco field, that would get pinched off right there and that tobacco plant would get topped. And the reason for that is, is keep most of that energy going to that leaf. But that's growing in the garden. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, they were taught by hand, but you know, sucker by hand also, but later on there was actually a spray that would come out. They would spray on the tobacco to keep it from suckering out so much. And I've already suckered this one right here uh, yesterday. But look at there. I, were those suckers that it's also going to have flowers? Just makes the prettiest flower right there. All right, enough of tobacco. Let's get to the bean patch. I guess don't know more people grow beans because they just don't know about them. We don't talk about them enough. And you know, there's different kind of beans. It kind of gets confusing. Now in the South, what we grow is a snap bean. We do not ever grow a shelling bean. I don't know why. Last year we started growing cranberry beans as a shelling bean. We did that some, but up to then, here in my garden, we've just always grown snap beans. Now up north, a different story. A lot of people grow shelling beans up there. Snap beans is a staple for us in the garden. Every time we plant a garden, we always plant snap beans. Now there is bush snap beans and they are pole snap beans. I planted both of them. I like them both. If I've got just a little bit of room or if you've got a small garden, I think pole beans is probably the way to go. Pole beans are gonna take more attention you got to trellis them up and you got to tend to them a little bit better. They got a longer lifespan there. You can possibly go grow pole beans, let them, you know, make in the early spring and then keep them over and let them produce in the fall. Bush beans, on the other hand, 50 to 55 days. We're going to put, pick these things three times at the most and they're going to be over with. All right, so I'm going to talk specifically about bush beans because that's one we grow every time. We don't always grow pole beans, but we grow bush beans every spring and every fall. Bush beans, 55 days maturity. We consider these kind of a short crop. The thing about bush beans is most of the time when it gets hot, hot, they'll throw their blooms off and they will quit producing. So that's kind of been a timing thing in the past. We need to get those bush beans in early and be through picking them before it gets hot, hot. Same thing in the fall of the year. However, we got a new variety we brought out last year called Hoss Green Blaze. It's changed the way we grow our beans a little bit. We can actually get a couple of different plantings in in the springtime and let them run out into June because they tolerate the heat so well. And down here in the south, man, that's really important because that heat can make our beans just throw those blooms off and make those plants go backwards. So having this variety right here, which has been a staple for the last two years for us, changed our green bean game just a little bit. Now green beans is one of those things that's easy to grow. Probably one of the easiest things out here to grow with the exception of maybe squash. I normally when I plant them, I just fertilize them one time at plant and I'll put me down a good dose of complete organic or may side dress them just a little bit if I don't get the opportunity to put that complete organic before I plant. But they don't like, like a lot of fertilizer. Green beans are legumes. Legumes, as we know, don't like a lot of fertility. What's gonna happen if you fertilize your green beans too much is you're gonna grow a lot of vine and they're not gonna set beans. 
So we don't want to do that. If, you got, if you've had them before and you grew all kind of vines and you didn't have much of a bean crop, it's because you gave them too much nitrogen. Fertilize them one time, we get a good crop of beans. We like this nice green color on them right there. Now for us on these green blaze beans, we normally will get three good pickings off of them. Pickings, as we say in the South, is harvesting. So these right here have already been harvested one time and they're loading up again. I want you to just look there at these beans down through here. Now, one thing I like about these Hall Green Blades is they make a nice straight bean right there. It has a dark green color to it. The yield on these things are, are really well. They load up and it's just a dead gum good bean. I probably, unless I run across something that just knocks my socks off, won't never plant another bush bean besides the Hall Green Blades because it just works so well for me. I like to walk out in the garden and snack on them a little bit. Now we like to eat them fresh. We ate some the other night in a frying pan with some olive oil. Cooked them whole, those were great. But the main thing about a green bean is we can with them. We're able to have a food source all winter long of green beans. You know, get a top for supper, you just open that top, dump out those green beans and you got a nice meal, just warm them up. Full of vitamins. Good to eat, and you always got your food source right there. Don't take any electricity. They're just sitting up there on the shelf. Now, as far as pests goes, there's not a lot to worry about on beans. We do have the southern peaky curio that will sting that pod and lay its egg in there. You'll see that little black spot on your bean. We don't like that. We don't have as much problem with beans as we do peas. Um, we do have it occasionally, so you kind of have to kind of keep an eye on that. We do have thrip problems occasionally, and we do have aphids. And you can see that damage or see their population on leaves. So if you got that, you want to hit them with something, clear them up and move on. For the most part, we just don't have to spray our beans very much. And it don't take a lot of them for us. So these two of us, we grow about a 30, 35 foot row. And that's normally enough time we get our three pickers to have plenty to eat fresh and to put plenty up. I have them on drip irrigation so that we can get the most out of them. They don't stress any from not being watered. And the deal me and Mama Hoss has, and we've always had this deal, was I grow them and she harvests them. Now I'll get out here and help her every now and then, but that's kind of her things to come out here and harvest them. Now, I got her off a hog farm. She come off of a, a country homestead years ago, 38 years ago to be exact, or 38 or nearly 38 years ago. And um, I didn't marry no city girl. I knew one, married one that got, uh, knew how to work. And she don't mind getting up here and harvesting these beans and she enjoys canning them, putting them up. I guess my point is green beans is something we don't talk about a lot, but we do grow them all the time. And I think you should be growing them too. Easy to grow. Don't be intimidated by putting these up, canning these things. We got a video showing in detail how to do that. And then you have a food source all winter along and you get to enjoy these things fresh, green beans, not a lot of investment to grow them and a lot of reward.